That's Substantially. So are they, are they, you don't, but the new, but all, all modern translations are based on the Masoretic text. Not all modern translations. Uh, I'm not aware, are you aware of any that are not? Can you name one? E-L-X-X. The what? E-L-X-X. What's that? English Septuagint translation. And the new revised. Oh, well, obviously by definition, yeah. Because it's Septuagint yeah, translation. No, I'm talking about the mainstream, like this Bible, for example, the NRSV, yeah. which is an academic translation, uh -huh. like all modern Masoretic. Bibles, apart from your Septuagint one, use the Masoretic. But the Masoretic is different to yeah. the Greek trend in we important agree. ways. But does that mean both are inspired by God? So the original text is inspired by God, the way it's been translated... Is that inspired by God? The way it's been translated, Sorry, the Septuagint which is part? more faithful. Uh, three. Yeah, but is it also inspired? The translation, the translators themselves were not inspired by it, God. Is the Septuagint itself inspired by so God? Is it scripture? The original text is and it's very close to the original. When you say original, you mean the Hebrew? Yes. No, I'm talking about the Septuagint. again. Is that inspired yeah, by God? So I'm saying the original text of the You mean Hebrew the Hebrew? Which yeah. Was inspired by God as the prophets right. wrote. But I'm talking about the Septuagint. And, uh, hold on, hold on. And I'm going to speak. And the Septuagint is the most faithful to what was originally written. So it's not Hebrew. inspired by God then? Huh? So it's not inspired by God the then? The translation itself is not inspired by God. I see. The words right. that are translated. So, so yeah, yeah, I understand. So the thing is, the New Testament, Bible. when it quotes from the Bible, yep quotes from the scepter again. Yep. So you're saying it doesn't quote from the word of God, it again, quotes from again, a translation. It, it quotes from a translation of the word. Yeah, but it's not inspired, is it? The translators were not inspired. And, no, no, the translation. What it is a translation of is inspired. No, no, the translation itself, is that inspired by God? No, the translation. Right, so the New Testament quotes from a non-inspired, according to you, yeah. translation of an inspired text. So did, I mean, it, that's not very satisfactory, is it? Not very how, satisfactory. Do you, how, do you define, how, how do you define infallible, firstly? Uh, I don't. The, I, I'm not used to it. The translation... I, I, I don't know. Are you What's that you're a Muslim, eh? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. The translation... I'm a Muslim. The translation itself does not need to be inspired. If the text it's translating is inspired. But it, is, it came and to I'm be inspired. You, what, it doesn't. It claims to be inspired, though. I can bring the, the New Testament says the Septuagint is inspired by God. Did you know that? 2 Timothy 3.16 says the Septuagint is inspired by God. No, it actually says, it, actually says it's inspired. No, no, this, this, the Septuagint, because it says... All scripture is... Probably. Yes, but it's talking about the Septuagint. How do we know this? If you look at the passage, Paul is addressing Timothy, who from his youth knew the sacred scriptures. The yeah. sacred scriptures for Timothy would have been the Septuagint. It's the standard... No, let me yeah. finish. So he says, Paul says that these scriptures, the Septuagint, uh -huh. are inspired by God. Yeah, we, you deny yeah. what Paul says. No, you, you disagree with the Apostle Paul. I'm not, I'm no, not disagreeing don't. with him. Faith, oh, they faith. are inspired no, then? No, no, again... <laughs> you're, it's like you're debating like it's a dumb point like no, the it's a very important point. It's, it's Do you know why it's an important point? Because, because... Wait, if you'd let me speak, okay. please. please. So, a translation does not need to be 100%, 1000% accurate for the script it's translating to be inspired. For example, I can have I can have a translation, even if I went, got the original text somehow, right. I can translate that to English and still say the text, what, the, what it says is inspired. Though it's not in a language it originally would have, and it may have made very minor mistakes, the thing, the meaning is still retained and what it's saying is still retained. I don't think so because there are major in, in the book of Hebrews I think it's chapter 11 the, the author there quotes the Septuagint. again it is so different from the Hebrew original he makes a whopping mistake in trans no no, 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 no sorry so you, you just interrupted me let me just finish yeah. he makes a whopping mistake in translation this is acknowledged by Hebrew Hebrew scholars I think it's 11 he talks about where uh, there's a prophecy uh, uh, to, to, to where it says in the prophets that God will prepare a body for his son this is the Incarnation, and he quotes, I think it's from a psalm. But this psalm, if you look in this Bible or any modern Bible, it translating it from the Hebrew, the original, the one you say is inspired, doesn't have that. It's, and according to James Barr, who's a professor of Hebrew at Oxford University, who, I, who told me about this, uh, this is based on a, a, a very obvious misunderstanding of what the Hebrew says. This is something he understands why a mistake was made. But the point is, it's a point of doctrine. It's been established. A point of fundamental Christian theology is being asserted here based on a mistake, an error in the translation okay, okay. of the, the Bible. Okay, yeah. So when you say it's trivial and it doesn't matter, is, it matters big this time. This is the problem you've made. You've said that the, the text, the Hebrew text we have today is the thing that I was calling inspired. Yes. That's not the case. Oh, okay. I don't agree that the Hebrew... So the Masoretic is not inspired? 
no, I don't agree, agree that the translation is 100% No, uh, is, it Maser is, it Maser is, is it Maserati? Is it Maserati inspired? No, the Maserati It's not. Bro, are you going to let me speak? Wow. I can explain what I'm saying. I'm saying the Maseretic is not as faithful to the original text as the Septuagint is. What original text? We don't have the, the original text. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm so saying how do you know it's not faithful if it, we don't have it? The Septuagint lines up more with older manuscripts. Like Such as what? The Dead Sea Scrolls are much more recent. The 2nd century BC. The oldest yeah. of Dead Sea Scrolls is, is second, 200 BC. Yeah, but the Maseretic... Uh, at least in theory goes back way the Hebrew goes back way before yeah, but that where's the actual physical well you tell me exactly no, is it that's raining? my point is it raining oh it is actually raining that's so my, my point so, so how do you know the Masoretic is not as faithful as older texts and we don't have the older because, text because the older, oldest text we have lines up with the Septuagint okay so can so we I, so I, okay. I would go with the one that's closest to the time of the prophet which would be the Dead Sea Scrolls right? and, and they're about 200 BC the oldest yeah yeah okay um, um, when did Moses Moses live, roughly. So I wouldn't say that Moses just did. because just because I, I wouldn't say it first of all, I wouldn't say that Moses wrote the entire uh, entirety of the Torah. While he would have wrote parts of it, it would have okay. also been confined. Fine. By so it. so wh when did Moses live, roughly? I don't know. Well, should we say 2000 BC? Is that fair enough? I don't do textual criticism. No, no, it's not. It's a question of history. When did the historical Moses actually live on this planet? When was he alive? Should we say 3, uh, about 3000 BC? Okay, I, I, we'll go with this. So we'll go with 3000 BC. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest copies of the Old Testament we have, are 200 BC. So we have a gap of over two and a half thousand years okay. where we have nothing at all. How can you be sure that it's reliable if it's copied and copied and copied and copied over thousands of years? How do we know corruptions didn't come in? Errors? People change the text. Now That's what big, happens. It begs the question of why should I rely on the Quran? No, no, talk, no talk about, we're Quran. talking about the Quran. We're talking about the, Moses. But Moses the wrote the Pentateuch, or they're yeah. part of it. Yeah. But the earliest text we have are thousands yeah. of years later. How do you? How do we know they're reliable? I don't use textual criticism to say that they're reliable. My point for okay. why they're reliable. What do you rely on then? My point for why they're reliable is coherency and interconnections between the two. Coherence. For example, I see I see fulfilled prophecies to the to the to the point where I don't think these prophecies could be just faked. I don't think I think that the New Testament is so coherent in the context of the Old Testament that I I think that's a proof. In do you know why scholars don't think that Moses has anything to do with Matthew? Mar with, sorry, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old but Testament. I, I already. I mean, there, there are good reasons why, because it contains a lot of anachronisms. It mentions the names of people and cities and places which they did have many, many centuries after the time of Moses, which suggests but, that they were written long after but, Moses, yeah, because but, Moses himself could not have known these I, places. I, I, we, th are, I can email you the examples. They're, they're names of cities and I, people. I, this I is. I know you laugh, but. You see, this is what mainstream biblical scholarship is known for I, centuries. I, I this is not something I looked in last week. This is, already, this is mainstream. But I already granted to you that past the Pentateuch would have been written and compiled by Ezra and his companions. So I already granted that to you. So you're, you're no, you said part of it was by Moses, though. Well, well it's a straw man, because you're, you're refuting a position which I haven't posited. I didn't so, say that Moses wrote most of it. So how much of Pentateuch did Moses write I then? Tell you. Sorry? I, I can't tell you. I don't. Is it uh, n virtually nothing? I can't tell you. I okay. don't know. Half of it? I, I just told you. I can't tell okay, you. Okay. Okay. The thing is, because we don't know who wrote it, when it was written, and if it's reliable, this is the problem. But we don't know the answer to these questions. I said it would have come down. And yet you believe it's inspired. So it would have come down from the Orient. Uh, or oral tradition. Oral, oral tradition. Oral tradition. From okay. a national grade level. Okay. Okay. The, is the Israelites. Okay, so wait. No, that's a good answer. I mean, okay, it, it, yeah, carry on. We'd like yeah. to explain. So, so the Israelites yep. back then, before Christ, were very strict. Were very strict with their beliefs and very strict with keeping the text. I think you'll find that was the rabbinical tradition after the time of Jesus, when this this care that you accurately call that describe really was a feature of Judaism. But before that, that didn't exist. That you, this is anachronistically reading it back in, into time. Well, because we, if you look at the manuscript tradition, the the Masoretic text, the Septuagint, uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch, and other. Uh, 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 textual traditions of the Old Testament we no longer have, but we know they exist because they're quoted by the people. We, we, 
you see, you see huge, huge diversity in in the Old Testament text. They, even the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, the Book of Jeremiah in the Dead Sea Scrolls is much, much longer than the Dead Sea than the Jeremiah in this Bible. It's not the same. So I think this all this strict oral tradition doesn't really wait, work. Wait, wait, wait. In this Bible, yes, are you talking about the Masoretic text, yes. Okay. Yes, so what exactly. About, what, so the what Dead Sea Scrolls. What about is, the okay, I'm saying the Book of Jeremiah in the Dead Sea Scrolls is much, much longer, okay. in, in physically longer than the one in the Masoretic text. Okay. So which one is the Word so of God? So which is the Word of God? The Septuagint also has many differences to the Masoretic no, in, in his translation. I've given the example from Hebrews. Yeah, but he's asking you in terms of Jeremiah. Gave me an example of the Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's on my head. I don't know that. I was just pointing out the difference between Dead Sea Scrolls, the earliest Jewish Bible, and and the Masoretic text. Oh, we say that the Masoretic there, there are lots of differences. Wait, wait. So this whole thing about strict oral tradition doesn't really work. We've got the Samaritan Pentateuch, another Jewish, what they were called, they would say, is a Jewish trans, uh, Israelite translation. Sam Samaritan what? The, the Samaritan Pentateuch, Pentateuch yeah. is actually another Old Testament. And then there are other textual traditions Jewish, which, which also, yeah, I, I know that well, they, well, I know that Israelites don't think so, but the Samaritans themselves do think they are. Okay. They would, I, I'm, I'm defining it from their point of view they, they think realize. they're the people of God of Israel yeah, yeah, not, they, they do no, you, but you, but you may disagree but they think they are that's the point okay, but that doesn't um, mean anything to us because uh, the uh, okay. are still considered heretics because they only accepted the five books of the Torah. I'm not talking I'm not making theological judgments about whether or not they're correct I'm saying there are lots yes, and lots of Old Testament need, and they don't always stuff. agree with each other but, but so sure, this idea but, of strict tradition doesn't work in but, practice but hold on, people can alter text yes. that's, that's inherently that's a thing that can happen so you can say the Samaritan Pentateuch, and we're just saying there's no there's no evidence that the Samaritans are inspired. Therefore, have you looked into it? I've looked into Samaritans to some degree. So you you you've got good arguments why their that why their no, Pentateuch no, is not inspired no, by no, God. No, I don't. But I, I know okay. some of I know some of the difference. You, you know, biblical scholars reference they look at the Samaritan Pentateuch when okay. they translate the Bible. It, you sometimes see it I mentioned in the bottle of bi Bibles. It actually says Samaritan Pentateuch says X or whatever. They're aware of it and they use it in their translation of the modern yeah, translation. Yeah, but so they give it some respect. Doing, they give doing, it respect. They're doing so because they want to use various variant readings to give us what, what the best version yeah, they get. Yeah, absolutely, the best, the, the best translation. It's just yeah, us exactly. Different translations, so we know we've got a lot to work. With. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 They use all the sources they, that they mean can. That, yeah, yeah. that material is inspired, or that material is correct. No, but they think it's inspired. No. no. What, the, the, the Samaritans are, think their their Jewish their Bible think, is inspired. They, they yeah, that, but, but they don't. Yeah, but, they but don't you see, I, I asked you if you thought your Bible, the Septuagint, which is quoted in the New Testament all the time, if that was inspired. Yeah. And after a rather painful discussion, you said no. Even though that's the no. very translation, the Bible itself quotes them all the through the New said, Testament. I said the translation itself isn't inspired. Yeah. I, the, or, that the translators weren't literally writing God breathed. I think the New Testament author thought it was inspired because they quote from it as scripture. Yeah, because they're quoted. As God it. says in his word. And then they quote from the scripture again. They don't yeah, quote from the Masoretic. It's, like, it's again. like me quoting from the Bible in English and saying this is inspired. There's no problem with that. No, but for them, but this the, trans okay. the people who translated it into in English could have made a but Paul himself I says the Septuagint is inspired by God yeah. into Timothy 3.16. No, no, the scriptures are inspired. So no, well, I, no, no, the Greek is uh, God-breathed. She said the scriptures that, That's the technical, that's the literal meaning in, in Greek. But, uh, well, I, 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 said, what we'd have to, we have to ask Paul what he meant by that. No, but you, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the, the Apostle Paul. Listen, so. the he says the scriptures are good. That's not contradictory opinion. I don't know. What do you mean he's not nice? I don't know. I don't know what Paul meant. No, no. I don't. I don't know what Paul meant when he said God breathed. Okay, so what do you think? You're a Christian. What do you think your apostle meant by it? When you tell me what it means. The scriptures are going to be infallible. Okay, that's fine. If you believe that, fine. I don't have an opinion. I'm neutral. Nobody, nobody argues over that. All us Christians affirm. No, but you do argue about it. Would you like? I tell you. No, no, you do. Christians have always argued about this because technically the translators themselves. No, no, no. A lot more. Not right. about no, it's a semantic issue. Verse right now. The interpretation of very much okay. verse you brought from Paul. Let, let me tell you why. Because, because if, if the scriptures are God to read, then they're going to, be yeah. they're going to be infallible. Yeah. They're going to be infallible. Oh, the not really. It doesn't matter. I, no, I don't quite agree. Let me explain why. Let's take the. Do you know about the earliest canon in the New Testament? I can, but it's in the moratorium fragment. It actually lists the books. Well, a lot of the books in your New Testament are not in that. So two Peter's not in that. Some of Paul's letters are not in that. 
the book of Revelation is not in that okay. because he didn't accept that with scripture so when, when we say infallibility it all depends which canon we're talking about Christians have always disagreed about which canon no it's not that they okay. they may have had different canons yes but that doesn't they mean still they still do yeah I, I agree with they may have had different canons but that doesn't mean they disagree on the book specifically they do okay do, do, do. for example the Codex Sinaiticus yeah. they have the Epistle of Barnabas Shepherd of Hermes exactly. is that inspired that, that, is that infallible yeah, we, can, we can say the Epistle of Barnabas no, 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 what, what, what? it's in the Bible okay. what do you mean it's in the Bible uh, the Codex Sinaiticus that's the earliest New Testament in existence yes, I, know, I never said that it's not infallible so you, you believe that the Epistle of Barnabas is the word of God do you I, I believe that the Epistle of Barnabas is God yeah, but this is the so you accept the scripture yes well, I accept that scripture and, 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 the, okay. and the Shepherd of Hermes you accept that as scripture as well do you I'll accept that as scripture but right. it's not it's funny there's not a single modern Bible that ever says that how come you are the only Christian in the world the only Christian in the world the Bible isn't going to tell me that the book of Matthew no no it's not in any modern Bible the Shepherd of Hermes is not in any modern Bible you believe it's in the Bible again so you have different you're making up your canon as you go along different canons you're going to get something that we disagree on it does it does because no modern Christian apart from you believes these two books are in the Bible for example you're aware of Ezra and what he did, yeah? He, um, so there's after not the, a after the Israelites had left ba Babylon, there is a con but in he, the he took all the books and he decided Masoretic. which book should be in the Jewish book. Allegedly, allegedly. The allegedly. allegedly. That's historical, uh, it's not actual correct. proof. But yeah, I, the I accept the story is probably true. There's yeah. no problem and with reading the Masoretic text as long as you realize that the Roman Empire there's some things that are slightly mishandled. And there's no problem with the Jewish They had the Septuagint. They were using the Septuagint. But if I read the Quran in England, and I accept that some things are slightly mishandled. Sorry, the last bit, say the last bit again. They never disagree. Two different canons, but they never disagree. Who, who's they? Sorry, uh, who is they? The Israelites. No, no, they disagreed. They disagreed, big time. Uh, would you like to know why they disagree? How they disagree? Where the evidence? Okay. In, in the Roman Empire, most Jews, like today, don't live in Jerusalem, in Israel, I mean. They live in the diaspora, in the great Greek Roman world. Like today, most Jews, many live in America or Europe. They don't live in Israel. At that time, most Jews used the Septuagint. That's the whole point, this translation that was done. It contained more books than the Palestinian Hebrew original. So, it included Ecclesiasticus, this bigger canon. It includes the Book of Wisdom. It includes Tobit. It includes a whole bunch of stuff written in Greek that's not in the Hebrew canon itself. So, the Jews did disagree big time in the first century about which books go in their Bible. You just showed me that they had a different canon. Yes, that's the point. The, the books that go into the Bible are different. And it yeah, matters for doctrine. They had the Septuagint because during the Roman Empire and yeah. they had Ezra's canon during the time yeah. when they left Babylon. But when you say Jews they, agree, but in the first century, in Jesus' time, Jews, Jews disagreed. For example... Where did they disagree? Well, because because this, the, the Greek-speaking Jews tended to accept the Greek uh, books in Greek, like the Book of Wisdom, but those in Palestine tend to accept the, the shorter Hebrew Bible, which didn't include these extra bits. And still today, if you look at a modern... Uh, the, the Jews tend not to accept these uh, Greek books. They accept the Hebrew books in Hebrew. So Jews did disagree then. They disagree... I don't care before that. Oh, you, but you said that you, you said the Jews agreed. The times of Christ and prior to the time of Christ. The time of Christ, they, they didn't agree. I've given you, I've given you, the, I've given you the reasons. I, at the time of Jesus, in the first century, yes. diaspora Jews used the Greek translation. The others used the Hebrew, and there were different canons. Again, I'm going to say, having a different canon doesn't inherently mean that they disagree with each other on you know, the different books. By definition, it does, because the canon is a list of books. It doesn't. Again. I would say again. I'm not, I don't, I, I, are you aware of the epistle? The, he's a Christian. Are you aware of the epistle of Barnabas that, that was in the Codex Sinaiticus? Yeah. Would you disagree? Do you disagree on the epistle of Barnabas? Because like, it was part of the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. Is it scripture? Would, would you consider it still scripture? So I think in order for it to be categorized as scripture, it has to meet like four criteria, right? It has to be used in some churches for instruction. It has to be like at least dated to be uh, within the first century for the New Testament Gospels. Uh, for the New Testament uh, criteria. It has to be tied back. Is that, is that your book? It has to be tied back to a identifiable apostle from the apostolic age. So if it doesn't meet those criteria, then you could judge it on that grounds. But I don't think we'll oh, can have it back now. for tutelage in any major church. I don't believe so. But it, was, was, I'm not aware. Yeah, but it was used because they, okay. it was part of the canon in the Codex Sinaiticus. Sure. Which is fine, but, but then was it, which church was it used in? Was like, well, no church was used in because it was a yep. canon for everyone. 
We should follow the Codex Sinaiticus. We have an expansive canon. It's not exactly. limited to all sure, because we have yeah. different, different churches in the early uh, centuries had different uh, books they accepted as scripture. Sure. For example, one Enoch was accepted as some. The Epistle of Barnabas was as well. Uh, the Genesis Didache. Uh, the, I mean, the, 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 the list of the, uh, the, 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 the list. Uh, uh, the Didache was accepted by some Christians as scripture. scripture. Yes. It, it wasn't well. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm not going to debate him. I'm going to discuss with you. So, so, Please don't lie to me because you also gave me some examples prior to this. You wouldn't inherit prior, to, prior to what? Like when, when him and me were talking to you, you gave us examples, for example, in Hebrews chapter 11, you said that it contradicts something in Psalm. No, no, it's a mistranslation I mean, a mis of the Hebrew. This is acknowledged by academics. You didn't show me. Sorry? You didn't show me. Oh, well, 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 I'll show you. Oh, okay, show me. Okay. Go for it. You told Go me that you could have been in Sorry? What did you want to look up? Uh, the, the, uh, the passage the in Lord Hebrews, is it chapter 11, where it misquotes? Is it chapter 11? From the Lord out of heaven. I've got 11 or 10. Yeah. I've just tried to identify the uh, passage. From the Lord. So the Lord rained something from the Lord out in So how many Lords have Two Lords. Is that not implying two persons who are Lords? But you said Triumph Yeah, it is chapter 10. So it's Hebrews chapter 10. This is the NIV, which is an evangelical translation. Do you, do you, do you object to that? Yeah, let's, not, again, again. Yeah? let's not use the NIV. Well, wait, which translation would you like? No, just tell me. Uh, can, can I? Can I? Okay, NRSV. NRSV. What's the C stand for? Oh, you're Roman Catholic. Why are you using a Catholic translation? Because I've seen that. We'll just use the NRSV. It doesn't have to be Catholic. Just use the standard version. Uh, new, new revised. There you are, Anglican. Uh, okay. Right. Yep, this is fine. So this is uh, Hebrews chapter 10. So, I mean, this is. I don't know if you want to read this yourself, but therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you desire, but a body you prepared for me. This is the incarnation, yeah? Uh, with burnt offerings and sin offerings, you are not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It's written about me in the scroll. I have come to you to do my will. So, this is about. This is an important point of Christian doctrine doctrine is being predicted, prophesied from the scriptures. Um, and it is Psalm, oh look, see, see the footnote, Psalm 40, verses 6, 8, see scepter again. Okay, wait, so, close, so, close so, it. so, so, wait, close I, it. let me take a picture of Remember, yeah. Are you having a oh, close it. What did I say? Go up. And stop. Let me quickly First change the translation to my, can I, can no, no, I, no, I, I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my translation. Because it's my special translation, this is unique. Can I use my translation? It's the NR. Why do you want to use my it's the same as this one. It's the same. I know, but I It's the Catholic edition. It's the Catholic edition. Please, can I just use my translation? This is your translation. I just don't want to do that. That's it. There we go. There's no difference, trust me. I know there's no difference. There's no difference. Just in case. It's exactly the same as the one I've just quoted. I don't care. Right. What are we all going on? So, it's coming here. We're looking at... Uh, can you look up Psalm 40, verses 6 and 8, in your in a modern Bible? Can, can we look in the modern Bible? No, I don't need to look in the Because I've I'm, I'm got a special point. From the beginning, I have not been... Okay, we'll look up. So my, my, we, 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 the Bible's been used, so we'll have to use another one. Can we, can we use the and now the Lord God has sent me... No, we're going to use a modern translation. I don't want to use a modern translation. You can research it yourself. You can research it yourself later on. Can I please use the interlinear? I'm going to... So what was it? Um, verse uh, Psalm 40, what was it? And his spirit. One, the person who's speaking. 6 to 8. So it's, uh, Psalm 40, verse 6 to 8. Uh, and it says here, there we are. In sacrifice and offering, you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. You see, it talks here of an ear, which is actually the Hebrew, but in the uh, the Greek translation quoted by the Hebrews, it has body. This is a mistranslation, well, well understood by scholars, of the Hebrew original by the Greek translation. You can pick any translation you like, it's exactly the same in all of them. Thank you. Could you open the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. Uh, open up what? Sorry? The speak from the beginning. Oh, okay. Instead of a modern then, translation. Why, I, I'm just, just, why don't you look it up? You, you, you can look it up. I don't have the in partnership uh, with the Lord God and his So there's a whopping 
big uh, uh, error about Christian doctrine in the New Testament, improving a point of doctrine from the Old Testament that doesn't actually exist. It's a really important point. Wait, 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 wait. go back. Let's see. Yeah. Is this the yeah, like this is the King James Version, by the way. You're interlinear with KJV. You might want to have a, a modern translation. Oh, it's up to you. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's the same. The point must be the same anyway. Psalm 40, verse 5. Oh, this is verse 6. It's actually verse... It's verse 6 to 8. Six, yeah? Yeah. Six. It's verse 6 to 8 in the Septuagint. And this is the real, right? This is one B. So, so hold on, in, the, in that verse where you say, I'm the first and I'm the last, there is, there is no God. Besides me, there is no God. So you would agree that Revelation presents... Is there a, is there a yeah, English translation? Can you see that? Oh. Well, well, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. So what does this what change? So, so, so the Septuagint has a body I have prepared for you. This is a reference to the Incarnation. That's precisely why it's quoted. That's in the Greek, yeah. But it's a mistranslation of the original Hebrew, which doesn't have body. It has an ear. And again, it's a different, completely different point. Repeat, repeat that again. I don't okay. In the Greek translation, remember the New Testament doesn't quote from the Hebrew Bible normally. It quotes from a translation, the Greek translation called the Septuagint. Well, unless you, see, this is basic. This is basic stuff. We 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 can see that. If you look, when Paul quotes some scripture, what translation does he use? We can see that he also uses the Septuagint. He uses yeah, the, the, yeah, exactly. That's my point. The Greek translation. Yeah, we agree. We agree. So when you look at the Greek, the Greek, it's, uh, the Greek translation, the Septuagint, translated into English, it talks about in, in Psalm 40 uh, about a body that has been prepared. It does say that. It's not. It's not a mistranslation. My point is, and this has been pointed out to me by Professor James Barr, Professor of Hebrew Bible at Oxford University so it's not my idea I don't read Hebrew I read Greek by the way but I don't read Hebrew he says the original as all modern translations of the Psalms will say doesn't have a body it says in ear and it's a common mistranslation a mistake you'd like to make if you didn't know Hebrew very well experts can see this yeah? but, the, but the inspired Bible has done this because you know we also see other passages like Hebrews chapter 8 where we see Paul oh. quoting from the Septuagint and it actually fixes the Maseretic. Uh, could, could you ask him to bring it again? Um, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, do you want to take it off? Yeah, I think we're going back to circles now.